In the dead of night on October 7, 2023, the world woke to the thunder of war as Hamas militants unleashed Operation Al-Aqsa Flood against Israel. This wasn't just another episode in the long history of Middle Eastern conflicts. It was a chilling, calculated move, sending shockwaves across the globe. Why did Hamas, known for its fierce stand against Israel, choose this moment for such a brutal invasion? The answer lies buried in layers of history, religion, and politics, entangled in a web of sacred beliefs and ancient prophecies. Also, why now? What triggered Hamas to launch an all-out attack, branding it as a holy mission to save Al-Aqsa? Why risk everything in a conflict that seemed to promise more devastation than victory? Does this signal a new chapter in the ancient battle for Jerusalem, one that could reshape the Middle East? And what does it mean for the people caught in the crossfire, the ordinary Israelis and Palestinians who have longed for peace? In October 2023, the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, a site sacred to both Jews and Muslims, became a flashpoint for one of the most brutal conflicts in recent history. For Jews, this hill, the Temple Mount, is their holiest site, believed to be where King Solomon built the first temple 3,000 years ago, and the location for the future third temple. For Muslims, it's their third holiest site, featuring the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, the oldest Islamic structure standing since 692 CE. Despite Israeli control of Jerusalem since 1967, Jordan's Waqf and Al-Aqsa Mosque affairs manage the Temple Mount, with Israel controlling entry points. Jews can visit, but not pray here, to avoid offending Muslims. However, Israel's chief rabbinate forbids Jews from visiting due to the site's impurity, a rule most Israelis respect. Tensions escalated as fringe ultra-religious Jewish groups began praying at the Temple Mount. In 2019, during Ramadan's end, Jewish ultra-nationalists entered the compound for Jerusalem Day, the first such instance in 30 years, breaking an Israeli promise and igniting fury. In April 2022, six Jewish extremists were arrested for planning a goat sacrifice there during Passover. Then, in 2023, Palestinian rioters barricaded themselves in the mosque, prompting Israeli police raids, firing rubber bullets and stun grenades, and arresting rioters. These violent clashes, rocket attacks from Hamas, and Palestinian chants like, in spirit and in blood, we will redeem Al-Aqsa, have become tragically common. Days before Hamas' Operation Al-Aqsa flood, ultra-religious Jews conducted provocative tours of the mosque complex during Sukkot, backed by Israeli police and denying Muslims access, igniting outrage and warnings of retaliation. The situation around the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound took a dramatic turn with the announcement of a red heifer's birth in Israel in September 2023. This event stirred excitement among ultra-religious Jewish groups and Christian fundamentalists, as they believe the red heifer is key to building the Third Temple, a prophetic event heralding the Messiah's arrival. For centuries, Jews have awaited the rebuilding of the temple, destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. Most Jews believe God or the Messiah will rebuild it at the right time. But groups like the Temple Institute and Temple Mount Faithful, backed by Christian fundamentalists from the US, have taken matters into their own hands. They see the Third Temple as a catalyst for Jesus' return and the rapture, influencing the US's strong ties with Israel. Most preparations for the Third Temple are complete. Trained Jewish priests, priestly garments, sacred vessels, and architectural blueprints. The final requirement is the ashes of a red heifer for purification rituals. The heifer must be perfect, adding to the rarity of such an event. When the Temple Institute announced the birth of a flawless red heifer, it reignited fears among Palestinians and Muslims worldwide. The prospect of a Jewish animal sacrifice on the Temple Mount, seen as necessary for the Third Temple, was perceived as a direct threat to the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. Hamas' naming of their invasion as Operation Al-Aqsa Flood reflects their response to these developments. They saw it as a call to protect Al-Aqsa from an imminent threat, igniting a war beyond mere geopolitics. 
Operation Al-Aqsa Flood marked a turning point in the conflict over the Temple Mount, transforming it into a holy war fought by extreme elements on both sides. For Hamas and Palestinian Muslims, it was about defending Al-Aqsa from perceived threats to its existence. For some Israeli hardliners, it was about fulfilling a divine prophecy. While the majority in Israel and Palestine do not support this war, it's driven by militant, religiously extreme factions, causing immense civilian suffering. Stone-throwing Palestinians, Jewish zealots, and Israeli police in riot gear are now common sights at the Al-Aqsa compound, with each incident followed by rocket attacks and chants for redemption. It's about who controls the Temple Mount, the group that owned it first, Jews, the group that controls it now, Muslims, or whoever can take it by force, as has historically been the case. This war, escalated by the most religiously extreme segments of both societies, has trapped innocent civilians, women, and children in a cycle of violence and terror. It can't be solved through military or political means alone. The resolution lies in addressing the religious dimensions that have shaped civilizations for centuries. As the dust settles on the shattered streets of Israel and Gaza, the haunting echoes of Operation Al-Aqsa Flood continue to reverberate. This brutal invasion by Hamas was not a random act of violence, but a deliberate strike at the heart of a centuries-old conflict. The Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, sacred to both Jews and Muslims, stands as a symbol of religious and national identity, a beacon for fervent believers and hardline zealots alike. What does the future hold for this holy land? Will the Temple Mount remain a battleground for religious zealots, or will it become a symbol of peace and coexistence? Can the cycle of violence and retribution ever be broken, or are we doomed to witness an endless war fought in the name of God? These questions linger in the air, unanswered, leaving us to ponder the fate of a land that has seen too much bloodshed in the name of faith.